So I'm talking with Laura Hooper here, member of the House of Keys for Ramsey. And uh, while I had you in doing your interview for the yearly update, yeah. I thought uh, let's talk about you and your Twitter. Okay. Because you're, you're pretty big on that. You've got a lot of things to say. How do you describe your interaction then with the public and other mm. MHKs on this thing? Well, I, I see it just like any other uh, tool for conversing with people, really. It's uh, people want to talk to you on the phone or if they want to email you or sometimes they want to talk on social media. And uh, I, I treat all those the same. Uh, Twitter is a, a pretty good medium, actually, for engaging in some of those conversations because it, be, it is much more conversational than something like Facebook. I mean, it leaves you open, though, doesn't it, to attack or to be attacked, you know, yeah, well, it, it obviously it does. doesn't phase you. No, no, it's an entirely public forum at the end of the day, so anything you post is, is out there for the world to see, and you will get some people, a lot of people, actually engaging with you on some of the things that, that I put out there. And yeah, you, that comes with the territory, I okay. think. I've got this lovely little video that we can run now, which you, you, you picked up on. Um, it's all about light bulbs and yeah. energy saving. I mean, we might as well give them a free run of the, while we're talking about it. But you, this is the sort of thing you go, what on earth are you doing, basically? Yeah, so about a year ago, this is the Department of, of Environment, Food and Agriculture launched an energy saving scheme. This was off the back of a lot of pressure from some of us to actually launch something. Uh, and the original intention, I think, when it was put in the programme for government was to launch a scheme that was to help people insulate their homes, uh, by LED light bulbs, air tightness surveys, everything really that, that you need to do to make your house more energy efficient and to use less electricity so you can save money on, on your energy costs. Uh, DEFA went away and put a scheme together which was much narrower I think than some of us were anticipating it was going to be uh, and then in the last year they've produced statistics on how well that's been used so the scheme they've said has got over 12,000 eligible households and in the last year they've given out two grants apparently to the same household so that's, oh no, no I didn't know that bit that's, that's one, oh, one, one household has got two the grants same and they've given out 132 households worth of, of LED light bulbs so that is the grand total of DEFA's efforts at helping us make our homes more energy efficient now and you could attack that through the normal means, but you, you go to social media. Do you, you, must, do you get a bit of flack for, for that from inside? Well, I, I think it's fair to say that I've been ha hammering this inside Timwald and Keys uh, as well. Yeah, you have. Um, it's not, I'm not using social media to the exclusion of all else. True. But I think if if the departments are going to be putting uh, positive press out there on social media, it's worth being honest uh, with the public about just how uh, effective some of these schemes are. And from my perspective, it's about they're using different ways of putting pressure on government to force them to change their approach. So I think if we just simply relied on conversations in Timwall and Keys to pressure government uh, into uh, into changing its direction of travel, then you're relying then on the media getting that, that message out to the public in order to, to make the public then speak to their MHKs and put the pressure on government. Social media gives you a great uh, tool where you can actually bypass all of that uh, and speak directly to people. Donald say, Trump found that out. Essentially, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same logic. It's exactly the same logic saying this is an issue they're not taking it seriously. Yeah. Let's make sure people are aware of that. I mean, you've done it during question time. You've actually been tweeting on you to f your frustration sometimes of some of the responses you've got. I mean, you don't hang around. No, I normally wait till the, f the questions are finished, um, mainly uh, because I think it's not right to be. You know, okay, when but you're, you're there on talking. the same day or what? But yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, some of it is good to be to be quick uh, with as well, because quite often government will put out a press release uh, at the same time as giving you an answer on the floor, and so it's it's. It's about balancing some of that conversation, I think. What do you think with the government and their press releases and making their own videos and these yeah. sort of things? I mean, it, 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 it seems like there's a lot of people now working in communications division. Yeah. And it? I think in some ways that's a good thing because government is historically uh, pretty poor at communicating with the public. And I think a lot of the problems and a lot of the frustrations that I see people have uh, are because government is communicating so badly with them, and whether it's in respect of their education, whether it's in respect of their health care, whether it's in respect of government policy. Government just isn't very good at talking to people. And so some, some some of me thinks, yes, it's great that we've got more PR people, uh, but that, of course, is provided that what they're doing is actually engaging in that conversation and, spin not, though, and not spinning. Well, exactly. it's spin, though, isn't it? I to think some degree. I mean, I they'll say so the corn is. crops up, you know, yeah. not quite that, you know, the, but the, that's their message and they want to put their spin on that message. Yeah, and I think some, some of it is definitely that. Some of it, I think, needs challenging, and that, that again comes back to this is one of the big advantages of things like social media is it gives you the opportunity to point out when government says crops are up. Mm. You can point out and say, actually, here's the whole picture, yes. uh, and then you can decide yourself whether or not that particular statement is, is accurate or not. You moved into Instagram uh, last time we were chatting about a year ago. You was yes. going, did yeah. that also expand your potential interaction? <laughs> 
A little bit, not as much, actually. Um, That's a younger thing, would you say? I, I, I think it probably is. I mean, I've, yeah. I've come very late to the game with some of these some of these social media channels, Instagram especially, but I thought it's there. It's actually, it doesn't take any more time to post on more of them because they all kind of talk to each other, essentially. Yes, and so I thought, let's just make sure I'm as accessible as I can be to people. And that was just seemed the natural next step. See, that's what we're down to, accessibility. I mean, some MHKs, I don't know if they aren't even on Twitter or mm. anything, I don't know. They, they kind of have their day job and they, they private life and that sort of thing. I, is that almost impossible these days in, in this sort of world we're living in to keep things separate? Or, I mean, do you like being a 24 hour a day well, MHK? I, I think it's, uh, I've never seen this job as being a, a nine to five and I think most MHKs don't either. Uh, but I think it's just about how you make yourself accessible to your constituents. So some people obviously they'll call you at 10 o'clock at night and that's mm. absolutely fine. Um, if I don't want to be contacted, I'll turn my phone off. It's, it's, yeah. it's that simple. And so it's all about managing your own time. But no, I absolutely don't see this as being a, a restrictive job. You just have to be available to people as much as you can be. Yeah, I mean, you and Chris Thomas get into a, a Twitter yeah. debate sometimes, which is quite interesting as a third party looking in. You think, well, this is it. You know, why are they not yeah. doing this quietly? But you, you, you like that. You, you want it to be more in the public domain? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, Chris and Bill Shimmins are at the moment having a bit of a tete-a-tete -tete over the, uh, the figures in the Eastern Area Plan. Mm. And sometimes, obviously, we do a lot of these conversations behind the scenes anyway, you do talk, but sometimes it is worth escalating it, especially when it is something like the Eastern Area Plan that is so public. There isn't really an argument for saying, let's have these conversations behind closed doors. I mean, in, in an ideal world, you'd be able to have more of these conversations on the floor mm. of Timwell, but as you, you've seen quite recently, government tends to be in control of the way business is conducted uh, in Timwell, and so you don't have the opportunity and the freedom to maybe do as much as you'd like. And do you think that uh, the f way forward is for more to be done? I mean, you know, on, on, on the, in the social media world, or for instance, when you ask something and uh, you make a re response on Twitter and it's a bit, you know, I don't like that, you know, what you just said, do, do they ring you up afterwards or do they don't take to Twitter themselves to get involved, you know, government departments, will they? they no one will come back and I don't, think, I, I don't think I've ever had a government department call me up about something I've said on really? on social media. Yeah. No, it's uh, again I'm not sure how closely they they might monitor that. Mm. Uh, I think there's definitely an argument for saying more of what we do should be done in the public eye. Um, a, a good example of that would be maybe we should be talking about live streaming Timwall sessions and key sessions, especially, oh. especially question time. Um, I think it's all about making sure that we're accessible and that the business of government and the business of parliament is accessible to people. Uh, well, Timber question time, I, I, I yes, put yeah. up there, but I mean, that's a long, long effort. But yeah, you're right, the should be should be there, yeah. and it should be streamed, and it should be on the BBC Parliament channel, and all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, exactly, and that's the way it works in the UK. Yeah. Um, I think they do it in Jersey as well now, they have, they have video They've clips. got live stream. Yeah, and I think it's, it's about saying that if you're interested, it's there, and it's easy for you to, to access it. Any, any joy on that one? Uh, I, think, I think we'll get there eventually. Uh, it, I think it's a, a slight uphill battle because it is a big change to ask of people, mm. I think, uh, to go from this, this idea where you, there's just 24 of you or 33 of you in a room sure. to suddenly saying actually everything you do is suddenly going to be on, on camera. It's, it's a big step away from I know we're recorded anyway, but it's a big step away from Well, we, you know, we, when we first put the cameras in, it, it was quite interesting. There's some nervous-looking people around yeah. it initially. But, but on, the, on the positive side, when you ask a question and you don't get the response you, you want, you, you know, to see your body language is quite interesting. Yeah, I think it is. And I think I think for me it's interesting watching the body language of other people as well. You can see how people are reacting to the debate, how people are reacting to questions, uh, ministers and backbenchers. And I think if you're, uh, for example, if you're in a committee session, I've sat in committee sessions where the, the language that's used and the, the audio doesn't actually convey necessarily the feeling in the room. Uh, and I think it's important that people the get to see some The promenade one was that. definitely one. Th that's a few, few people said that to me. Yeah, that's probably a good example. Saw it, and what you heard, were, I mean, it was, it was factually there, obviously, yeah. but, but seeing the body language is incredible. Yeah, I think, I think it really gives you the full picture then. Is, um, when you're talking about, well, you know, our minister's in control of their brief, actually, sometimes the body language is more important than what they're saying. Okay. So we're now going to be more democratic eventually, do you think? Do we get to the point when the elections will be on just a button? No. <laughs> it's, I, it's, I think there's, there's an argument to say we should be um, putting more and more things, like I said, in the public domain as much yeah. as possible. Whether we'll ever get to the stage where everyone votes on everything, I'm not even sure that you'd, you'd want that necessarily. Uh, but making uh, elections more accessible to people is definitely a, a question, that, again, that Chris Thomas is supposed to be working on right now. Uh, so I'd like to hope that actually even by the next election uh, that we're in a place where uh, there are more accessible polling stations are more accessible. Maybe even you don't have to go to your local polling station. Maybe we'll be able to have a system where you can go and vote anywhere on the island just wherever you're uh, easiest for you to get to. Who knows?